Hello, my name's Lizzie. I'm Anglican. In about four and a half months time, I'm going to be joining a community of religious sisters as a postulant. This video is probably going to be longer than the previous videos I've made and I'm going to do it in three different sections and in the description box below this video I'll put the timings of of where each section begins so that if one section doesn't interest you so much you can skip to the next section but the first section is going to be about how nuns and monks pray in general and then the second section is going to be about how there's a, a simplified way of praying that, that's got its inspiration from how monks and nuns pray but it's aimed at those of us who aren't monks and nuns who've got to go to work or bring up children and we just don't have the same kind of time in the day that we can devote to formal prayer like like monks and nuns might have so the second section is going to be all about that form of prayer and then the third section is going to be me talking about my own experiences of about 10 years now of um the kind of prayer that I describe in, in the second section of this video where you, you pray at um, kind of set times in the day and you use the same words and the same Bible readings that other Christians across the whole country are using uh, uh, that, that morning or that evening or that night or whatever. So um, yeah, I hope you find this video useful and let's begin. I will Everything I say in this video, by the way, is true of monks and monasteries as well, but for the sake of simplicity and shorter sentences, I'm just going to use the words nun and convent in this video. So the first thing you might notice if you look at, if you go to a convent or if you look at the, the prayer timetable that each community will have, is that the Eucharist is central to their daily life. I, I've never come across a community uh, of all the ones that I've I've read the websites about or or visited myself that that doesn't have a daily Eucharist or communion service, um, and quite often the Eucharist tends to be around breakfast time, like maybe just before breakfast, or sometimes it's just before lunch to make it easier for people from outside the convent to come and join the sisters, maybe even to, to make it easier for uh, a priest to come in and take the service. So yeah, daily Eucharist is a big part of, of how nuns pray. And then, uh, of course, there's going to be times where the nuns have got time for their own like personal prayer, private prayer, whatever phrase you want to use, where they're not using set words together, but they might just be able to be on their own in their own room or sit on their own in chapel in silence. Uh, and that's that the nuns will have time to just talk to God using their own words from the bottom of their heart or um, pray in silence or they might, especially in the early early morning, I think that's usually a time when nuns will have some, some space before the day gets going to have like a, an hour or so or half an hour of, of quiet prayer just on their own in their rooms. And I think it's quite common that they might use that time to do something called Lectio Divina where you they might sit with the um, the gospel passage that's going to be read in the Eucharist service later on um, but I won't explain Lectio Divina in this video there are loads of really good YouTube videos about Lectio Divina so go watch them because they're really good um, but so nuns will have time in their day like quite often early morning and I guess if they wanted to before bed as well when they've got time just for their own um, their own prayer in their own words quite often in their own room but the rest of this video is about the other thing that will strike you if you see if you visit a convent or uh, look at a, a nun's prayer timetable is in addition to the Eucharist and any time for for personal prayer a nun might have in her day there are all these different services throughout the day 
at set times. I've got an example here actually because this is when I, I stayed at a convent once and they wrote out what was happening. Um, it happened to be Christmas Day but it'd be very common like, at any convent you went to to see like a list of this is happening at this time, this service is at this time, this service is at this time and usually those services will be at the same time every day of the week as well. Um, so, so those services uh, are called the office, the daily office or uh, the divine office and it's called, like office sounds like a workplace but it comes from the same root of the word. The idea is that praying is our Christian work and that uh, praising God is our duty or and our joy. Uh, and the the idea of praying at set times in the day stems from how Jews would pray. Um, that in the Old Testament, you see God asking his people to pray at sunrise and sunset. And then you see in one of the Psalms, it talks about seven times a day I praise you. And that there seems to be in the Bible, you see Jews praying at, at set times of day. And then when you, some of the passages in Acts suggest that the early Christians would meet together to pray at set times of the day. So that's the background to this, this form of praying at, at certain hours. And um, the names of these services throughout the day are in Latin because th this form of praying has been used for, for so many centuries by monks and nuns and and centuries ago like Latin what was the main language of the church uh, and some of the services names come from the old way of telling the time as it were where you talk about it's, it's been three hours since sunrise and six hours since sunrise and nine hours since sunrise so that explains some of the names and each of these services is really only about 15 or 20 minutes long on average and they usually have like contain obviously set prayers and then a few psalms from the bible maybe a short hymn and then maybe a song that's found within the bible and usually one or two bible readings as well like really short ones uh yeah, so that, that explains kind of what's going on inside these these little services. And with the help of a clock, I'll just give you an idea of what the a, a nun's kind of prayer timetable throughout the day might look like. There might be matins quite early in the morning. Then there might be some space for the nuns to have some personal prayer in their rooms before lords. Then after breakfast, before uh, the nuns start work on whatever their, their jobs or their tasks are that day, there'd be terse. Then just before lunch, there might be sext or midday prayers. Then there might be known after lunch. And by the way, most convents that I've visited, lunch has been like the main, like the main cooked meal of the day. Then there would be evening prayer or vespers around four or five in the evening. Compline, which kind of means completion, is would be like the last service of the day. And in some communities it might be like nearer nine o'clock at night or something. But most convents I've been to, it's been shortly after supper, which might be about six, six thirty and so it might be like 7.30 in the evening. Every community is different, so they'll have, every community will have their own times that they have these services, and some communities might simplify it, especially ones where the, the nuns are a lot more active and leaving the convent for parts of the day because they just, they can't pray at all those times. Um, so some convents might have, um, they might not have, for example, sex and known, they might just have midday prayers before lunch. Uh, if you go, most convent websites will have a, a page on their website where you can see what their particular 
timetable is and if you go and stay at a convent like in their guest house if they've got one um you'll quite often see it pinned either in your room or pinned on the wall you'll see that someone's written for you all the service times so that if you wanted to join join in the sisters at these services you'd often be welcome to to go along yourself and join in Obviously, it would be a bit impossible to pray at all those different times of day if you were in a full time job or bringing up a young child or just if you're not a monk or nun in general. So thankfully, there's a simplified version of this form of prayer uh, that's aimed at just those of us who aren't monks and nuns. Um, and in the Church of England, that would be common worship, daily prayer. and. The idea behind this is that this is in addition to your own personal prayer each day, this is a way of praying with other Christians because what this form of praying together using the same words emphasizes is that we need the we need both individual prayer and what you might call corporate prayer, like where you're praying with other people, because although we individually respond to Jesus we're also part of a family and being a Christian is never only an individual thing it's, it's always a family thing so that's why uh, people feel it's, it's good to have a form of prayer in your life where you're praying with others. The way that this is a lot uh, simpler than how a nun would pray at all those different times is all those different prayer times that a nun would have have just been simplified into morning prayer an evening prayer and also in here there are some words for for midday prayer and night prayer if you wanted to use them but a lot of cathedrals especially will have will use this book and will have morning prayer and evening prayer or sometimes it'll be even song with a, a choir singing as part of it and or some churches might also open up on certain days of the week and pe where people can come in and use this book and pray morning prayer together but uh, what's good about uh, common worship daily prayer I was going to say this book but you can also get it online and there's an app for it as well which I'll mention in a bit but um, what's good about this form of praying together is you don't need to physically be together to to pray together in this way because you can still be using the same words and the same Bible readings that other Christians across the country are using that morning or that evening but even from your own home or on your commute to work. Uh, so the way this works is that in the morning and in the evening there are there are set words to help you praise God and and think of others and pray for others and a bit like how a nun would pray that there's there's a set pattern for morning and evening prayer and it in this simplified form it would be like one or two psalms uh, an old testament reading a new testament reading um two songs from the bible uh and some time to to pray for for others and for the needs of the world so, so that, that's the same pattern that both morning prayer and evening prayer will have. And if it's a certain season of the year, like Lent or Advent, then you'd use like a, a different part of the book that so that the, the words, the set words of morning prayer or evening prayer will help you focus on on the themes of Advent or Lent. And then in addition, if you've got the book, in addition to that book, you'd need this, which is called a lectionary, which is basically like um, a Bible reading plan so that everyone around the country who wants to pray together in this way whether in a cathedral or in their own home that morning they can all read the same psalms and the same old testament reading and the same new testament reading so yeah if you're using like the book format then, then you'd buy a little book like this or even you can probably find this online as well um so just to i don't know if you can see this you can probably see two columns morning prayer evening prayer and it tells you um, which psalm to read and then um, an Old Testament reading and a New Testament reading and yeah like, like I said before the beauty of that is that even though you might be on your own 
uh, I'm often on my own in my flat just just using this um, but at the same time I'm praying together with, with thousands of other Christians across the country so it is a form of of corporate prayer a bit like a nun would pray um, just not physically in the same room but but using exactly the same words and the same Bible readings. Um, I think all Church of England priests commit to praying at least one of morning prayer or evening prayer each day um, and quite a few I know do both but it's not it's not only aimed at priests it's, it's for everyone that wants to pray um, together in this kind of way and um, so to give an example of how I do it I, a lot of morning prayers that go on in cathedrals or churches are about 8.30 or 9 in the morning which um, is impossible for me to get to when I'm if I start work at 8.30 or earlier um, and I guess that's the same for a lot of people so um, I usually pray all of these um, morning prayers and evening prayers at home on my own in my flat and um, so in the morning I'll, I'll use this book and then I'll, I'll find out what the Bible readings are from this book and then usually in the evening I, I tend to use my tablet because I, I like to when I get home just read the news quickly um, from that day so that in, in evening prayer when it gets to the bit where you, you pray for others I can pray for what's happened that day or what's going on in the world at the moment and um, so I wonder if I can here we are so I've just I've just put how can you see this I've just put morning prayer in the Google search bar and the second one down it's got morning prayer common worship so it's just come up second on the search list and I don't know how many it is. Um, there it's got the it's just got everything laid out that you need for that particular morning. So it's got um the song and then the psalm. So without you having to look things up, um, and then it will give you the Jeremiah reading and then another song from the Bible and then the New Testament reading. Um. Another song from the Bible that's always used in the mornings, and then it gives you ideas of who to pray for, um, and then it always ends with a prayer and then the Lord's Prayer. And I would say that when I do it on my own, it tends to take about 15 to 20 minutes morning and evening prayer, um, depending on how long I spend praying for people. And when I join others for morning or evening prayer in a cathedral or a church, it tends to be about 30 minutes. But yeah, on my own, 15, 20 minutes seems to be how long it takes. And then um, the last thing about how I use it is that there are times when I'm not at home, when it gets to about five-ish. Um, for evening prayer, I don't have a, a set time that I pray at. It's just when I get home from from work or if I'm going to visit a friend or doing something else after work, it will just be when I can at some point around dinner time. Um, so there, there are times when I've been coming home from a friend's house or um, there's a time each week when I'm in the library around five o'clock and I'll just use evening prayer on my phone, which isn't ideal but like when you're in a busy place, but sometimes I'll just put earphones in and put some quiet music on in the background to block out the noise, although um, there's something very incarnational about being in the middle of people praying. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'll I'll just be on my phone, um, like, like what I just showed you, using exactly that that I just showed you, um, on my phone, in the middle of the library, or on a bus, or I've even prayed evening prayer in a shopping centre before. <laughs> But that's the beauty of it being online, and I personally don't have the app, but um, there's an app for it too, um, and that's the beauty of of it being so easily accessible. Here are two random afterthoughts that you might find useful. Um, firstly, when I I started using this form of praying about ten years ago, and I was I started off by joining other people. For, for morning prayer, this was when I was at uni, so we, we'd all meet together in a chapel and pray together. Um, but say in the holidays or at the weekends, I'd be using it on my own. 
And when I was on my own, I wasn't sure how to go about um, voicing it because I was used to um, us speaking the words out loud when we were together in chapel. And I wasn't, yeah, it felt a bit weird. It felt weird just reading it with my eyes. You know how you'd read a book normally or how you might read the Bible to yourself. Um, and I found it a bit hard to concentrate when I was only reading through it silently. And it, and it felt quite like I wasn't fully praying it somehow when I was just reading it silent, reading all the words of the prayers silently. But then it felt a bit weird, like talking out loud like this when I'm on my own, these words. So it, if it's useful to you or interesting to you, what, what I've found myself doing over the last few years is um, whispering um, the words when I'm using morning and evening prayer on my own. I don't, I just read the, the Bible passages silently, but all the words in this book, um, I, I, um, I just like whisper and I just find that helpful personally. And another thing you might find helpful to know, if you ever go to a cathedral and join in morning prayer or evening prayer, or, or go to a convent and join in one of their services, um, something that might catch you out if, if it's your first time is quite often they'll um they'll they'll read can, i don't know if you can see this yeah they'll read things out um and quite often they might when you've got like a song like this they might divide divide themselves so that the leader might say the the odd numbered verses and everyone else might say the even numbered verses or they might have it that one half one side of the the chapel do the the odd verses and the other side of the chapel do the even numbered verses so if it's your first time to, to one of these service services it um you, have, you kind of have to just work out for for the first few seconds what's going on and how they're dividing this into leader and the rest or that half of the chapel and that half of the chapel um and the other thing that's quite common is in a lot of cathedrals and convents when they're when they're halfway through the verse they get to a dot or a diamond or a star or something and quite a lot quite a lot of the times they will pause for like one one second maybe two seconds at that diamond so again if you're not used to it you might not realize and when, when you're new to it it feels a bit like odd but you get used to it quite quickly but I just thought that was probably just worth mentioning too. So what are the benefits that I've experienced of this form of prayer over the last 10 or so years that I've been using it? Um, for a start it definitely has helped me uh, it is it's emphasize it's emphasizing to me on a daily basis that that Christianity isn't just an individual thing that it's it's a group it's a group thing um and so there's and it's given me like this nice sense of togetherness with other Christians especially as I live on my own it's nice to in the morning pray uh, and in the evening like pray with other people knowing that they're using the same words in the same bible reading so it, it gives a sense that you might get from a cell group or um, a Bible study together. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's it's got that feeling of of you doing something together with, with other Christians. And it definitely has a kind of balancing and making for like a very well-rounded year somehow in your prayer life. So. Um, at different seasons of the year like Lent and Advent and Easter that's all the wrong way around um it the, these forms of prayer will will give you different um themes to focus on in their words and in the bible readings they choose so it's so over the course of a year you've thought about um like Jesus you've thought about different aspects of Jesus life and you've thought about God from different angles, like God's different attributes. So it's just a very, it gives you a very well-rounded year rather than you just always focusing on the attributes of God that 
that you prefer to focus on or the you just going to your your favorite books of the bible all the time for, um so it, it stops you kind of wondering what bible passages to read and it also but because you're being being given which bible passages to read each day yeah, yeah it stops you veering towards your favorites or only reading the bits that you find more comfortable or um only reading the parts of the bible where you're more just sort of thinking what's the bible saying about how i should be living my christian life r rather than i don't know so thinking about what wider think wider issues in the world that maybe some of the old testament prophets are trying to get us to look at uh, just to give an example um so it, it kind of it seems to to take me out of my my individual self and make me make me feel a sense of togetherness with other christians and make me think outside of my own immediate preferences and concerns and that's the same with like say say i've woken up really uh, i'm just having a day where it i'm not in the best like of moods or something um but then you're you're reading a psalm that's all about praising god then it will it will remind me of there's always reasons to praise god and there's always reasons to be joyful um or say i'm having a really good day or um and i'm reading like a bible passage or or one of the psalms that's about people suffering then it helps me look outside of my own um bubble and it helps me think about who are the people that are crying out to god suffering in the world today so it yeah, it definitely has this effect of not letting me stay in my own bubble um, and my own, my prayer life isn't dependent on how I'm feeling that particular morning or evening. That This form of praying and having the Bible passages given to you takes you out of that bubble. Um, so I've just written a few notes of what I was going to say. Um, yeah, and it linked to that it, it just always puts things into perspective so maybe i had a bad day at work for example and then i come home and i pray evening prayer and just in a way i can forget about what happened that afternoon or, or incorporate it into my prayer and, and just reading about what god's done for people in the past or reading about the hope that we have in jesus it just puts your day into perspective and, and the last thing I was going to say is that that the the fact that you're praying every day at, at set times of the day um, it seems to also have like a, a grounding effect that it's it's almost like um, the pillars that hold up a building that's how I can that's how I experience it anyway or um, like the legs that hold up a table or something like morning and evening prayer almost like hold up my day and and so that the things that I'm doing in between morning and evening prayer are, are grounded in prayer and then over time what seems to have happened is have you ever seen these I think you can make them with children you, you make um this twizzly thing with card where you might have a bird cage on one side and a bird on the other and when you spin them around um like that really quickly um, to your eyes, the two merge together as one picture and the bird is inside the cage. But that's kind of my experience of this form of prayer, that because you're praying, then going about your daily life, then praying and going about your daily life, the going about your daily life bits in the middle are kind of blend with your times of prayer so that the bits in the middle you learn to do more prayerfully as well. And out of all this um, kind of, well, like nuns trying to pray seven times a day or whatever, or th this whole concept of praying at set times of the day, I I'm sure that the, the whole point of that really is to get to that point where we're praying unceasingly and not that not meaning that we're always sat with a Bible and a book or sat in a more sort of formal form of prayer but that our whole day 
becomes prayer. So that in addition to morning prayer and evening prayer, I'm also, all my conversations in the day are, are done prayerfully and I'm negotiating the photocopier at work prayerfully and I'm sending emails prayerfully and cooking it or changing nappies or driving or um, like walking through town, doing my shopping, all in, a, in an attitude of prayer. I'm sure that's what all these set prayer times really are aiming at, is a, just a whole life of prayer.